Hello! All right, welcome back. So I'm glad we got the first video done and um, all that out of the way. Now let's actually begin the course and I'll apologize again. We've got to bring the camera a little bit closer than we really like and we don't have the lapel mic for the, uh, for the sound. Uh, but uh, at least we're, we're rolling here. All right, so let's get started. As I think you recall from the first lecture, uh, or video, whatever word you want to put there. We um, had done the schedule, and the schedule has us getting started here with chapter one and wrapping it up and maybe even starting a little bit in chapter two. So let's go for another hour and 15 minutes here, and let's look at uh, chapter one. And uh, I'm going to say your homework then in the, in the book, and you got the PDF, is to read chapter one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lecture on chapter one, although I will say this, uh, unlike all the other chapters, well, I will lecture everything on chapter one. This one I'm going to uh, just kind of focus on the highlights of chapter one. Uh, that's because chapter one does some interesting things. It is um, a good first chapter, don't get me wrong, but it's not a physics first chapter. The, the first chapter here is about science. Uh, for example, one of the sections goes in and it, it defines what is science versus art. Um, what does science kind of do? What can pr science prove and what can science not prove? It's a, it's a really good chapter. So let me encourage you to read that chapter and of course to do the homework problems. Um, but I will then focus on a couple of the more challenging things. And, and this might even be a review because one of the things that the author does here in chapter one is he gets into the metric system and converting units. And that's really what I wanna do here. And so I'm going to do that. So I'm gonna put here on the board here, let's take a look at the metric system. And just in case you haven't seen the metric system presented in this way, uh, I think it's good for you to see. I'm going to call this a review, but it might be a review in a different way because it's a, it's a way that now that you're in college, it makes more sense. To teach this to elementary school, it doesn't make sense, but it is the real foundation of the metric system in a way that will give you more uh, control over the metric system, more power, if you, if you will, here. Uh, and here's what I mean by that. So if I take the metric system and I make myself a little chart here, and so I'm just gonna take a chart and divide it into two pieces here. And on this part, I'm gonna put quantity. And on this part, I'll put the units. And I'll even put a slash because what I mean here with uh, quantity is something that we would measure in the physical world. Something that physics would measure. And what you will hopefully see throughout the semester is physics starts with kind of a, a question about the physical world. And then from that, it usually leads to another question, which then leads to another question, which leads to another question. And that's how our science knowledge grows. And so I want to do this. I want to take you way back to kindergarten, if you will. Because way back in kindergarten, and probably even before kindergarten, but I'll just start there at kindergarten, is you were probably learning your first bit of physics. You may not have called it physics, but it was your first bit of physics. The, the teacher, perhaps, and I'm thinking of my kids recently who, you know, like took into the, uh, uh, you know, the kindergarten classroom. Well, I shouldn't say recent. They're, my youngest just graduated uh, high school now, so uh, they're not young anymore. But um, I remember their kindergarten experience more than I remember my kindergarten experience. But all three of them, as I would bring them into the kindergarten room, the teacher had laid out these tables and these groups. And in these tables, they were assigned a seat. They had to go to their seat. And in this seat, they were given uh, these pieces of paper, there were three of them, and they had different lengths. And the teacher was just really asking them to kind of put them in order, which is the longest, which is the shortest. Put them from biggest to shortest. 
And what the teacher was doing, and what I want to take you all the way back to kindergarten about, is this first quantity. It's called length. Uh, that is, what is the length of something? Uh, what is, you could even use the word distance. Uh, in this classroom, uh, if I were to get on this side of the classroom and walk to this side of, of the classroom, you know, how far would I go? Now, because we're on camera, I won't go the whole distance, but from that wall to that wall is about 10 meters. I'll just tell you, you're not in the, in the classroom and I won't do the whole distance here, but I do want you to then kind of jog your memory back to kindergarten or elementary school and then notice that you had really your first knowledge of physics. You were asking how far is it from one object to another, um, whether they were pieces of paper or not. You could, you could even put the word distance in place of, of length, okay? And so, again, like I said, this first chapter hopefully will come out to you as a, a review. And so when you have this thing, this is your first question. What is length? And then, of course, to measure this length, and uh, maybe I should point out why I have this slash here. I have this slash here because all of these symbolism that we like to use, or all these different quantities have a symbol, so I'll just put slash. Uh, we like to say then we will give it a symbol. Uh, mostly, I guess, because the word distance has a lot of letters and we like to just, you know, make it abbreviated. And so, in a normal class setting, I like to pause and ask the class, hey, what's the traditional symbol? But since we're not in a normal class setting, I'll just tell you the traditional symbol for distance is this just D, D the distance is. All right, so if I get on this side of the room and then I ask, how far is it to this side of the room, and as I already told you, this, this room's about 10 meters, then I would say from here to here, there's a certain distance. And that might have been the first physics that, that you started to learn, distance. I mean, really even way back before kindergarten. Um, if you have a younger brother or a sister, or you have uh, kids or nieces or nephews, you know, I always find it real interesting as they're learning distance, you know, they're in the crib lying on their back and we always put those fancy little mobiles up in front of them and, you know, they're reaching up and they're, you, you know, they, they're, they're seeing if they can hit it. Well, you know, the mobile's way up at the top of the ceiling. There's no way they're going to hit it, but they have no idea about what distance is. They're just discovering that and they're, they're learning their first step of, of physics. And that's what, that's what this chapter is. It's not really a physics chapter per se, but it's really getting you started with understanding the metric system and understanding these questions. And so I want to kind of set the seed that we're going to do all semester long. We're just going to ask a question. We're going to say something like, how far is it from one side of the earth to the other? How far is it from the earth to the sun? So that quantity is called distance. And here's what I want to emphasize. If you haven't already caught this, don't confuse the quantity. This is something physical. This is something that I would say is part of the physical world. It is not something that is made by humans. If there were no humans, there would be a distance from the sun to the earth. There would be a diameter of the earth. There would be a diameter of the moon. It doesn't take humans to create distance. So we don't create the physical world. We discover the physical world. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be asking more and more questions. So the first one, the easiest one, the one that takes you all the way back to kindergarten is what's distance? Now, of course, to measure the distance, this is where the units come into play here. And so we invent something that says, okay, let this be the standard. And in a face-to-face -face setting, I would now ask, does anybody know, and I'll ask it on camera, does anybody know what the standard base measurement is for length in the metric system. And usually I hear a bunch of things, but meter is one. And so hopefully that's what you were thinking and that what you were saying. It is a meter. Now, 
if you don't already and know, this table is about the length of a meter, okay, to give you some idea of what a meter is. In fact, earlier I had a meter stick. Maybe I'll go back over here and grab it. Here is the meter stick. And if you don't know how big a meter is, see, it's a little, the table's a little more than a, than a meter. But this is the meter stick, okay? And so it's good to, to know roughly what size a meter is. But again, here's what we like to do. We like to say the meter is, <coughs> or is, has a symbol, and we'll use the lowercase m. And so again, if we were uh, trying to describe how far it is, we would say, okay, from this side of the room to this side of the room is 10 meters. And so here I have a question for you. How would you write that on the board? How would you say that the distance from one side of the room to the other is 10 meters? Now, of course, there's not a single answer to that, but I hope you're thinking this. You would write D for... Distance, exactly, distance. You would write equals, which is a mathematical symbol that means is. So distance is, and then you would write 10 M, and that would mean 10 meters. And so maybe this is so easy and too much of a review that this is so obvious, but I want to point something out. And I hope I get this accomplished in this first lecture. I hope what I do in this lecture is nothing new. Everything you see right now in this first lecture, or this first chapter, is stuff you've already seen before. But what I am hoping is you're going to see it in a little different light. Because I would say this, that I have written a mathematical equation that tells me how far is it from one side of the room to the other. It's 10 meters. But this mathematical equation came from a verbal description. Did you catch that? Because physics is all about solving these problems. And there's two important steps. One is you have to solve the math. But before that, you have to change an idea. You have to change a description, a verbal description into an equation. And that's what I just did. And I don't think this is a hard one. I, I bet most of you probably didn't even give it much thought. You go, oh, that was, I, you know, I just wrote down D equals 10M. And that's exactly my point. My, my, my point is you are going to hopefully develop a way that when you think about something verbally, when something is described to you, you can change it into an equation. And that's what I just did. And that's an important skill. And it's one that I think all of you have a little bit of that skill, but all of you are going to be challenged through this class as we get to harder and harder concepts. And so this one you've seen before. This one probably isn't a surprise. But when you hear things for the first time, could you change? I call it the translation. Could you change a description, a verbal description, into a mathematical equation? And sometimes the other way around. Could you change a mathematical equation and say, what does it describe? And that's what, what physics is. In fact, I hope this is good news and not bad news for you. Do you like word problems? A lot of people, and you probably know a few, in algebra, they get those word problems and they go, oh, I hate word problems. Don't give me a word problem. And I think they're saying that because it's hard for them. And it's hard for them because they really haven't learned that a verbal description and a mathematical description are one and the same. It's one is Dias, good morning. It's Hey, it's one and the same. It doesn't really matter how I put it together. I'm saying the same thing. And here's 
the good or bad news. Every physics problem is a word problem. It starts off with a description of what's going on in the world, and you've got to change that into an equation. So when I say, right on the board, the answer from how far is it from one side of the room to the other, then this is your answer. You don't have to write it out in words. You can just say, this, this, this is a sentence. This is a sentence. You can read it like a sentence. You may write it like an equation on the board, but if somebody asked me to read it to them, I'd say, okay, what does this say? This says distance is 10 meters. I didn't say equals. I didn't say D. I didn't say M. I said distance is 10 meters. This is a whole sentence. In fact, I'll even go you one better. How come we write it as 10M like this? How come we don't write it as 10 comma M? Uh, how come we don't write it as 10 semicolon M? How come we don't write it as 10 colon M? And I could go on and on. Why do we put, what I'll say, nothing in between? Why do we write it this way? Well, again, if you haven't seen your number system worked out this way, oh, let me explain. Uh, let me do this by taking you back to third grade. See, in, in, in third grade, you probably did something like this, especially at the beginning of third grade. Uh, you probably came in and the teacher maybe put five plus five plus five on the board and said, all right, little Johnny, what is five plus five plus five? I know, well, that's 15. Okay, very good. And hopefully that's what you remember from second grade because you learned how to add and subtract in second grade. But in third grade, you were about to be introduced to something new. It's called multiplication. And so you know what you could do? You could write this a little different. What you could do is you could say 5 times 3. So what did we really mean by 5 times 3? Well, this times 3 meant repetitive addition. It meant take 5 and add it together 3 times. And so whether you write it in the multiplication form or write it out in repetitive addition, this is what you, you got. Now, as you got older, you then learned that maybe a nice way to write it is with a dot. And as you got even older, you say, well, maybe it's nice to write it with a parenthesis. And then as you got older and got to variables, you said, why don't we just do that? Now, this is the one I want to talk about. What do you mean by this? Now, maybe you didn't learn this till about eighth grade, as you started to get to variables, or even ninth grade here. But what do we mean by 5x? Well, what we mean, and you can do this either way. I guess I should have done it the other way around, but I could write this as x plus x plus x plus x plus x. One, two, three, four, five. And so what you're saying is add x together with itself five times repetitive addition. And we'll write it without anything in between. Now, why do I bring that up? Ah, let's come back to here. What do we really mean when we say the distance from that side to that side is 10 meters? Here's what we mean. We mean if you took this meter stick and you went over to this side of the room you could lay this down on the ground and then move it to here a second time and lay it on the ground. And then pick it up and lay it again a third time. And then lay it again a fourth time. How many times would you lay down a meter? Ten times. And that is really my point. I would write it this way. 10 equals a meter plus a meter plus a meter plus a meter plus a meter. And I'll stop there because I think you're getting the idea, but I would write that 10 times. And the easiest way then to abbreviate that is to say 10 
and use our symbol of multiplication and get a distance of 10. And so hopefully what you, you caught out of this little beginning part, if I can summarize here, is, is three things. First of all, notice that this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be asking a question about a quantity and then a unit to measure it. And to understand that quantity, we will be writing out a formula here. And in this case, when we write out it as 10m, I hope that big idea here that you've got here is that I could then be a translation. And so that's a skill to learn. And the third and final big thing I hope you got out of this is the reason I write it as 10m is I literally mean 10 times m. I, I don't mean a 10 and an m and I'm just listing two different things. I literally mean m plus m plus m plus m. This is a multiplication, and, and 10 times. I know I didn't list all 10 of them just because it was long. But that's this idea. Well, if that made sense then, let's try something. One more step here, okay? And here's what I mean by one more step, all right? So again, you probably did this in kindergarten about distance. But somewhere, and I think it's more second grade, that they ask a more advanced question. That more advanced question would be, okay, now that we know from that door to that door is 10 meters, what if I were to ask this, how much carpet would I need to buy to carpet this lecture? Now, of course, you're not in this lecture hall, so I'll kind of draw an aerial picture for you. But this uh, lecture hall looks something kind of like this. Um, on the front here, as I said, is 10 meters. And then the room goes back into a bunch of rows of seats. And it's not a very big lecture hall. It only goes back about 10 meters also. And here's my question. How much carpet would it take? Now, I think some of you are starting to catch on here that I'm asking a new physics question, right? This, this new physics question is a new quantity called, that this was face to face, I'd say, what would you call this? And somebody shouts out, area. Exactly. And so I'm asking something that is a little bit more advanced than distance. I think you would agree that the area of this room has something to do with here to here. But that's not the whole story you also have to include this dimension. And so it's not just the width of the room, but also the length of the room. And so you can't just answer how much carpet do I need from just this single idea of distance. This is something more advanced. And so I'm gonna use that as a way of saying, all right, Let's ask our second physics question. Like I said, this was probably about second grade. It wasn't a physics class, but you were asking a physics question. This is the physics you've learned in elementary school. You said, hey, distance and area aren't the same thing. What really is area? And so I would need a, a symbol. Uh, now, let me go ahead and give you the symbol for area. We like to use the capital A. Uh, you can kind of see that we try to make it as easy as possible to remember. Um, I will point out, I notice I did not use a lowercase a. Um, that's because we're going to have acceleration real soon when we actually start our physics here. So I want to stay away from the, the lowercase a. But uh, that'll be our symbol here. So if I come over here to this picture and I say, okay, area 
of this room is, okay, so did you catch that is, and I put equal, right? So the area of this room is, and how do I get the area of this? Now, usually when I ask this in a face-to-face -face setting, students go, oh, you just multiply the length times the width. Okay. Fine. And you probably learned that in second or third grade. But let me pause for a second. Why is it length times width? Or let me put it another way. What if you were never told that the area was a length times width? What if you had to figure it out yourself? What if you're trying to do physics here and you're asking a new question and nobody's ever told you what area is or nobody's ever discovered area? What would you do? And, and here's what I want you to see. I, I, I guess I would do something like this. Um, I would take maybe these big for lack of a better word, a sheet of carpet, if you will. And maybe I'd come over here and say, well, uh, if this sheet of carpet was a meter long, that's what was our, our unit here, um, this earlier on, and I better write it again, distance equals 10 meters, I would have said that there are 10 of them that I could fit across here. And so I would go one, and then I'd fit another one, two, and I'd fit <coughs> another one, three, Another one, four, another one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And, and so I would lay them across there. Now, of course, since they would have a length to them, they would also come down. And so I would say that, and maybe I should just darken these in, I would have ten of these. So did I count right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and I, I would have ten across there. But in order to fill this whole room, how many would I need? Well, I guess I would do another row of ten. And I would keep doing this with another row of, of ten. In other words, I would do repetitive addition. I would add up a row after a row after a row, and how long is it? So if we were to call this W for its width, then what I would be saying here is the area is the width plus the width plus the width. How many widths do I add up? the length of the room. And so I would add up the width, I would add it L times. And isn't that what we learned way back in elementary school in third grade? Repetitive addition is multiplication. And so you would say the area then is the length times the width. Now, let me just summarize if you didn't catch this. Because I know all of you already knew before you came into class, before you signed up for this class, you knew this equation. You knew that the area is the length times width. What I'm trying to get you to see is what if you had never seen this before, if this was all new? Because this is what we're going to do. Every chapter, we're going to ask a new question. That question usually starts off with this idea. What have we already learned? And now what? Because what we know already then usually leads to another question. Well, what about this? And so that's going to be our first step. Call it step number one. We will get a new quantity. And then this time it's called area. So again, I know you've already seen area, but I want you to try to imagine in your mind, what if you have never, ever, ever seen area before? You would have just figured out that there is something new, something beyond length, something called area. And then the second thing you would have done is you would have said, oh, this is the formula. And then you would probably actually do the arithmetic. And so in this case, you would say it's 10m times 10m. Ah, 
Check this out. Remember how we said a few moments ago that 10m means 10 times m? I, I guess you could really write this as 10 times m times 10 times m. Now, Somewhere else in elementary school, when you were learning about multiplication, again, probably third grade, maybe it was a little bit later in fourth grade, you learned it didn't matter which one you multiplied first. So what if I put the 10 with the 10? Well, that gives me 100. And then what if I multiplied the m times the m? Well, how do we write repetitive? Now, this was probably more fifth grade, but probably in fifth grade, your teacher said, okay, what is x times x times x? And just like back in third grade, you learned what repetitive addition should look like. We call repetitive multiplication x cubed, meaning the cube is the number of times you multiply the x together. So, keeping that in mind, if I had an m times an m, I would write m squared. And so, I have now answered this question. And, and again, let me emphasize, if you already knew the answer to this, great. I hope you all did. In fact, I hope I'm not boring you too much with this review. But what I am hoping is, do you see how if you had never been told area ever in your life, you could have come over here and said, hey, I think there is something else to discuss here. Besides the length of the room, there is the area. This would be important if I wanted to know how much carpet to put in this room. And so that's step number one, a new quantity. And then look at here, step number two, you came up with the formula. Now, again, length times width, you probably already knew back in third grade. But if you were never given this formula, could you have come up with it? And then look at what we also did. Number three here is we've just discovered what the units are. I mean, this is the unit. It's an M cubed. Squared, squared, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. And M squared. Uh, and, and so I could come over here and say, this is then the unit to measure area. I'll spell it out or kind of abbreviate it square meter, but it's probably best just written as M squared. That's the symbolism we will use. And so we have then meter squared. And let me do a fourth thing here. Right? The fourth thing is then, okay, now that we've done all this, and let me point out the three. Step one, we came up with a new idea. Step two, we came up with the formula for this new idea. Step three, we got the units to measure this new idea. And step four might be the most important of all. What does it actually mean to you? What does 100 meters squared actually say? See, back here, I told you the distance is 10 meters. Okay. And so you took those words and we put it into a formula. Now I'm really asking the other way around. I have a formula. What does it mean? And I hope what you see here is I would have a square meter added to a square meter added to a square meter added to a square meter how many times a hundred times and so what this says to me is this thing whatever it is what is an m squared because I have a hundred of those and an m squared is really what's in this box up here, right? An M squared is this piece of carpet that is one meter by one meter. And so if I kind of color it in, that's 
is the physical meaning of what do I mean by an m squared. It is a piece of carpet that is one square meter. It is a piece of carpet that measures a meter by a meter. And how many of these square pieces of carpet would I need in order to cover this room? 100. And so I would need 10, and then 10 more, and then 10 more, and 10 more, and I would have 10 rows of 10. That is 100 square meters. I'll try this again, but I hope you see those four steps, because watch this question. Now that I think I've done stuff that, again, is probably all review, stuff that I, you, you, know, you, you said I already know about area and length before I came to this class. Okay, okay. I'm just hoping you see it this way. And if you've never seen it this way, or this strategy, this is real important here. Because again, this is exactly what we're going to do. Because it won't be long before we start getting to quantities that you haven't seen before. And I'm going to follow these four steps. I'm going to say, let's take what we already know and let's ask another question. So that'll be our new quantity. And then I will ask, given that description, what's the formula? Given that, what are the units? Given that, what do the units mean to you? And it's those four steps we're going to keep doing over and over again. And we're going to start off from things that we learned in kindergarten to things that you haven't been exposed to yet. That is what the physics is all about. One question after another after another. All right. So watch, watch. Let's see if I can demonstrate it again. Uh, let's say I change the question. So instead of asking, you know, how much carpet would it take, uh, let me ask, oh, how much or how big of an air conditioner would I have to buy in order to cool the room down? Now, remember, the room itself, the floor of the roof, the room, is 100 by 100. 